In this video, I'm going to go over how to close over 70% of the pitches that you make, and you can use this for selling any kind of services. I've used this for selling agency services, consulting services. I've even used it to sell SaaS services, but it works really, really well for any kind of services. Now, we're going to go over several things. First of all, why your pitches aren't working. So if you're having trouble pitching or you're just having a really low close rate when a prospect comes in, we're going to go over why your pitches probably aren't working. We're going to go why you shouldn't send a proposal. And that is a really important part of this. I'm going to show you the math about sending a proposal versus not sending a proposal. I'm going to give you a walkthrough of my own pitch deck so that you can see all of the elements that go into a successful pitch deck. And then I'm going to give you an opportunity to get a copy of that pitch deck for free. So let's dive right in here. So we're going to start out with what you should not be doing. Most people, when they sell services, let's say you're selling an agency service and it's a retainer based service. Service. You'll have a prospect and they'll come in and they'll ask for a proposal and you'll give them a proposal. And what's going to happen? Well, about 90% of the time, you'll just never hear from them again, unless you've got just they're coming in from a referral or something that's really hot. Very often, you're not going to hear from them again. So you're not charging for that proposal. So there's no skin in the game for the prospect. So they just go away. So very few of them actually convert into anything. So maybe 10% of them might go somewhere and then you actually close them, and then there'll be an onboarding phase, and then you've got an engagement. So these numbers are just made up, but they're they are typical for some of the agencies that I've worked with in the past. So you might have a 10% conversion rate, and let's pretend that the client is worth $250,000. Now, it might be worth 25,000 to you, might be worth a million, it doesn't matter. The point is the math, and we're gonna take it through doing the traditional way, and then the improved way. So let's pretend that the lifetime value of that is $250,000. So the value of a lead is $25,000 because it's going to take 10 of those leads in order to get your 250 k So that's what most people are doing. They're taking the prospects and very few of them are actually getting into the portion where they're getting paid. Now, that's what the don't do is. Now, let's contrast that to what you can do to get a 70% or more close rate. So the better way of doing this is to use an audit. Some people call it an audit. Some people call it a roadmap. You can call it all kinds of things. But the point is to use a paid audit or roadmap or something like that instead of just giving away a proposal for free. Because in the traditional way of doing it, they're just asking for a proposal. There's no skin in the game. Instead, you flip this on its head and you say, hey, prospect, I can't give you a proposal because I don't know what you really need. And I don't know if that's going to actually work for you. And we only work with clients where we know we can get a result. So as a result, we have a process. It's an audit. It's a paid audit. It's $5,000. Now you can pick your number, but it's $5,000. And then if you go through that, we'll tell you exactly what you need and what you don't need. And if it makes sense to work together, we'll work together. And if it doesn't, we'll help you find the right person to fill in those gaps. So if you do that, you'll have a conversion rate, which is higher than if you were just sending out a proposal and hoping that it comes back and then trying to go directly into a retainer relationship. Here, you'll get a much higher conversion rate. Why? Well, partially because it's a smaller commit. When you're sending out a proposal and someone thinks that they're having to commit to a long-term relationship, people don't like to buy subscription things. They don't mind so much buying one time. So buying a one-time $5,000 thing is much less intimidating to them than it would be for buying the retainer basis. So you'll actually find a higher conversion rate here for a couple of reasons. Number one, you're positioning yourself better because you're positioning yourself as an expert. In other words, this is the way that we do things and we are not gonna let you become a client unless you do this. So you'll get a higher conversion rate. So already you're making money on the front end. You're only talking to prospects here who have paid you money. Then the next thing is from that audit or roadmap, the conversion rate will be substantially higher. So once they've undertaken this with you, the conversion rate will be about a 70% if you're doing it well. And then you go into your onboarding and then your engagement. So the thing that you'll realize when you do this is this gives you the opportunity to revise the roadmap over time. So instead of having a lifetime value of 250,000, it's 350,000 because very often this entire process, the cycle of onboarding, which can be quicker because you've done the audit and then an engagement, and then you do a roadmap every year, and go back again, they always know that they're getting the most current and best thinking. So it'll increase the LTV. Now, what does that mean about the value per lead? It's now considerably higher because they've paid you up front. 70% of them have converted. 
the lifetime value is longer and the value per lead is much larger. Again, the numbers might be different for you, but the principle is the same. In almost every single circumstance that I've seen, this works better than doing the old way where you're just sending out proposals. So that is the process. We talked through what is the process for getting to this, but what's the pitch look like? Okay, you've gone through this audit and right here, what does the pitch look like? What does that pitch deck look like? And that's what we're gonna go through next. I'm gonna walk you through my pitch deck, when to use it, how to use it. So you're gonna do this after you do the audit and then it, you never, ever, ever send the deck in advance. This is key. Every single time we've sent the deck in advance, the close rate has plummeted and very often we didn't get the deal. So you never send it in advance. It is a live presentation, ideally in person. If you can't, you do it by Zoom, you do it by phone, but you always do it live. You do not send it in advance because that gives them the opportunity to read it and not be presented and answer questions. And you need to be in control of that meeting. And lastly, all stakeholders must be at the meeting. So if you are selling and the person who is actually buying it, anyone who can say no is not in the room, you cancel the meeting and you reschedule it for a time that they can all be available so that you can answer all of their questions. You don't wanna be in a situation where you get to the end of this presentation and somebody says, well, that's great. Now I gotta go and talk with Bob because Bob may or may not uh, want this to happen. You can't have that happen. So everybody has to be in the room. Don't send it in advance. So your job in this presentation is to stretch the gap. Now it's a phrase I took from my friend Taki Moore, stretching the gap. This is a, think of it like a rubber band and they are somewhere and they want to go somewhere and you're creating tension between where they are and where they want to go throughout this process. You are showing them that where they are is not a tenable situation, that they need to continue to do something. They can't just do nothing because if inaction is allowed, then they're just going to say, well, it's easier to do nothing than to do anything. So what you're doing throughout this entire presentation is showing them all the things that are wrong and talking about the consequences of not taking action or not taking action with you. And that's what stretching the gap is. So just think of that as building building tension throughout this entire process. And the only release of that tension is them hiring you. So we're going to go through this pitch deck. This is the pitch deck that my agency that I sold, Practice Alchemy, we used it all of the time. It is an assessment and recommendations. So after we've done the audit, we'll get together all the stakeholders and do this presentation. We did it mostly by Zoom. A few of them we did in person, but almost always by Zoom. So this does not have to be in person, although that is ex extremely effective. So this is a redacted, which means I removed all of the confidential information, but of an actual pitch deck of a client that closed. And I think that the lifetime value of that client is in the hundreds of thousands for the firm. It's still a client of the firm as far as I know. So let's go through this. And again, if you want a copy of this deck, watch through this and I'll show you how to get one. And sometimes you'll see at the little bottom here, there's gonna be some little flags. This is not part of the deck. This is just little roadmaps to talk about what you're seeing here. So we started with a unique model and you can have this or not, but what we did is we had this genius model as we called it of what are we trying to accomplish here in our marketing, simplification, elevation, and integration. So if you have something like that, that is a unique process, a unique model, this is a good time to show that you think a little bit differently instead of just diving straight into the pitch. Next, the summary of findings. So this part is where we go over what we found in the audit. Now this shows them that you have actually taken this seriously, that you've done your homework, and that's gonna make them feel confident that if they hire you, they're hiring somebody who's actually doing their homework and being thoughtful of this. So it starts out with a summary of findings, you go over who the team is, and then the first slide of this is really the audit process. The process gives certainty. And the more that you can make your relationship based on process, the more successful it will be. Instead of just being the client throws you a bunch of crap and then you do some things and it comes back, it's all based on a process. Not only will showing this at the beginning help your close rate, but actually following through with it and having a process for everything that you were going to do in your business to give them the comfort and the results that they want is going to be an improvement. So. We talk through first, what's the audit process? And that gives them comfort again, that we know what we're doing. And we didn't just do this willy-nilly, we didn't just throw this together. Now, the fact is that a lot of this can be templatized because a lot of the audit actions are the same for every client. And the results are different, but we've turned it into a process. Now we start to stretch the gap. We start, well, what are your current growth risks? So in this particular client, paid media was underperforming, their content strategy was garbage, their marketing staff was not being productive, 
They don't have a CMO function. So pretty much they were running around doing a whole bunch of stuff that was completely ineffective. So we start to stretch the gap to show this is at a high level what's wrong. And we're going to dig in and show you all the things that are really going wrong because you have not put enough attention into this at a strategic level. This is the kind of selling that let us be essentially high level advisors instead of just coming in and it's like, oh, we'll just run your ads. No. Just running your ads, that's a commodity. If you're actually a strategic advisor filling the CMO function, then you can charge a lot more. So we dive into analysis and recommendations. Uh, I'm not going to go through the meat of this, but you'll see all the sides. So we talk about publication strategies. And here you can see that we have made this stoplight coloring. So we go through all of the elements of their marketing presence and we give them a really easy visual about what this is, whether it's doing well okay or terribly. And then here, there's a little health meter. So what you can see that we're doing here is we're simplifying it because their, their eyes will just gravitate towards, oh wow, there's a lot of red on here. And based on what these things are, you can decide what you make red and you can have your own rig it to get the results that you want, essentially. We were pretty neutral about this and tried to say as accurately as we could what was good and what was not. So we did give them greens when they were good. We didn't make it all red. But the point is that they'll focus in on the things that are red and yellow. And that's going to give them a real good visual indicator. It's like, okay, well, I definitely need work here. And I just can't hire one person to do that. In our case, we're going in with full services marketing and we did it all for law firms. So we didn't want them thinking, oh, I can hire a PPC guy to fix this. Because the PPC guy is not going to fix the articles, not going to fix the blog problem. Web problem? No. So can't be that guy. Well, maybe I'll just hire somebody who does content stuff. Well, no, they can't do everything with content because they can't do the paid media stuff, which we'll get to in a sec. So then we go through again, more details. We're starting to stretch the gap, right? We're starting to make them feel really bad about where they are now because they need to know that if they don't fix this, they are not actually going to get a whole solution to their marketing problem. So we went through, look how poorly your page is loading, do a website assessment, a whole bunch of pages can't be found, social media, they're missing some pieces of that. Online footprints for reviews in each one. There's a, there's a health meter and we just go through each one of these and we don't say necessarily why in all the detail because that'd be a really long meeting, but we do point out each one of the areas in which they're read. And we're taking the time to build that tension at the beginning saying, if you don't fix these things, you're really not going to get the results that you want. Directory errors. Here's all the places where they're incorrectly listed on directories. Own media assessment. Okay, so now we're starting to sell against complacency, as a little note here shows, which is you're doing something now. And very often the feeling that they might have is, wow, there's all this stuff that I need to do. Maybe I should just not do anything. This seems really hard. Now we sell against that later saying, we got a full solution for you. It's all taken care of, but they're starting to feel like, oh, maybe this is, this is really hard. We have to tell them that they need to take some kind of action or else it's only going to get worse. We recommend a 90 day deep dive by activity to assess spend. In other words, you're spending a lot of money now. Inaction is not an option because you're spending it in a really bad way. You are actually wasting money today. So we went through that. Then we switched to lead acquisition and paid media. So now we're gonna to start to paint the other side of it. Now, what's the dream outcome? So we, you can do this in multiple ways. In this particular presentation, it is a lot of the problems are on the organic side and a lot of the upside is on the paid media side. That's just how it happened to be. But as long as those elements are in your presentation and you're starting to have that tension, then you're going to get a decent result here. So we're now starting to paint the dream outcome. So this was a law firm and they wanted as many new cases as possible. So we said that we can drive them a significant number of inquiries. Did end up doing. So now we've sold a lot by emotion. And now we got to get the logic in here because they need to convince themselves, not just emotionally, but logically that these, this is a solution that they want. So we actually start putting numbers in here. Recommended test budget was five grand. We think we can get appointments for $91. That's 55 appointments. This is during their initial setup period. Close rate at 5%. Now their close rates were really terrible. Um, that was because their intake process was terrible. So we knew that we would be able to help them beat that as well. So that's 2.7 cases, bearing in mind that, that these cases can be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. That seems like a good monthly spend to win ratio. So we model it out. We give them more selling by numbers here. And then what this requires here is a section about process again. 
So we talked about process at the beginning. There's a process for this audit I'm talking about here. There's a process for how we're going to do this. We're not just going to be this black box where it's like, oh, I got my PPC guy. Don't really know what he's doing, but it seems to be working out okay. We say, no, we're going to do these things, these best practices things, and it's going to be a checklist and where you're going to know that it's being done. And by doing it this way, again, it gives them confidence that there's actually some method behind this. And it's not just, I'm trusting a guy. Then we go into the recommendations section. And in the recommendations section, I had this, I created this marketing map. And I have a whole separate video that can walk you through the marketing map. And everything you need to know about marketing is kind of on this map. And what we did, because I had this entire structure here, is just highlight the things where they're doing well, not doing well, and meh, it's okay. So that they can get another visual of what the process looks like. And again, we're talking a lot about process because process drives results. Process drives confidence in the, that the client has, and it actually increases how long they stay with you instead of just getting sent a report every month and not knowing what's being done. So this, again, gives confidence and that helped up the close rate substantially. We talk more about marketing. Now we make towards the end what's called in marketing a damaging admission. And this is to tell them that it's not all roses because if what you're doing during the selling process is saying, oh, it's gonna be great, we can do everything. This is going to be perfect. You don't need to worry about anything. People's bullshit detectors start to go off. This damaging admission slide towards the end is a very important element of upping the close rate for this presentation. We specifically say that we cannot guarantee outcomes, right? You cannot guarantee outcomes for your clients, Mr. Lawyer, and neither can we. So what we're saying is this is not a guaranteed thing. And this sets the frame in a way that is accurate and also helps us with the close rate because it makes us feel like, okay, well, we're being honest with the client and they know that we're not trying to oversell them on this. So if you agree to this plan, we'll execute, but ultimately closing engagements will only happen in the real world by your firm. And that's pretty important for anyone who does any kind of lead jet, right? Because the, the expectation is, oh, I, I'll get all of these, I'll get all of the sales. Then they always flub it right at the one yard line, right? So this is a pretty important thing that you can bring them back to and remind them of uh, when they're not closing as many as they thought. And then you can give them an upsell to actually help them close more with their, with their intake and closing process. So the next thing to do is in here, give a next steps. And the way that we did it is here, as the note says, we de-risk the ongoing retainer. People don't like to buy retainers. It is something that they feel like they're gonna be on the hook for tens of thousands of dollars over a long period of time. They don't like doing it. So we de-risk it by saying, it's just a test. We're gonna to work together for 90 to 120 days. We're gonna see how this works. And then at the result of that, we'll know how to plan going forward. So we kind of sell that audit at the beginning and then a short time period, and then it kind of rolls from there. Now, the fact is it really rolls from the very beginning because we're always setting them up to succeed from the beginning. But in this way, you're again, increasing the close rate because it feels like less of a big commitment when they're actually saying yes. Then we've got a marketing plan. So we'll just kind of fill in some of these things here, whatever your process would be, whether it's a Gantt chart, what have you, that's how you illustrate again, that they're getting something that is a program that it feels customized to them. Then we talk money, six month initial engagement to do these things, no annual contract. You can give 60 days notice and quit. We give the investment, not price, we call it investment at the beginning. So 13,892 per month. So we calculate this based on not just the cost to us, but value to them. That's a subject for a whole nother video, but that's how the price is derived. Now, the interesting thing about what we've just gone through here, you've just seen a bunch of slides and folks who needed organic, and paid, et cetera. The interesting thing that I found is that this number actually doesn't matter as much as you think it does. Because when I started out doing this higher level selling, I would start out and the exact same stuff that you'd see here would be $4,000 a month. And I was like, okay, well, let's try 5,000. Okay, let's try 7,000, 10. And we kept on going up until before I sold the company, I think the largest deal that I had done was around $25,000 a month, essentially for the same thing. Now we did have to hire more people, more specialists around it, but the margins actually were better than in the early days. Cause there's just, you, you can do a lot more when you're getting paid a lot more and you can give a lot more value. So the interesting thing is that when you're starting to sell in this way, the price actually becomes less of an issue. We talked about scope of services, show the marketing team, here's our benchmark, and then we ended the presentation. So that's the process that I use to get really, really high close rates 
for pitching services. It's the process and it's the deck and it's what goes on in the deck. If you would like a copy of this deck, you can grab one at ceoworkbench.com. And inside there, you're gonna see all kinds of trainings which will help you with not only your positioning, but your selling, and you can get a copy of this deck in there. So I hope this has been helpful and I'll see you in the next video.